podcasts do not necessarily reflect those of Parax, its affiliates, or its sponsors. And hello, everybody. This is The Calling 2.0, and I am Jerry Ayers with The Calling (laughs) 2.0. And with me is the one, the only, V. What's happening, V? Hello, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) So, gosh, this is going to be a fun night tonight. We got a really cool guest, don't we? Yes. Do you want to introduce him? Well, you may or may not have seen him on the Holster Files, and he's also Grace's presence on 28 Days Haunted. And with us tonight is Shane Pittman. Hey, yeah, Shane. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank well, you. we really appreciate you coming on. I've been waiting for a long time to get you on, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you've... Uh, well, gosh, let's just dig right in, huh? Right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'm curious, and I think a lot of people are curious too, is how, when did you get interested in all this? I mean, when you were a little kid or what? Well, yeah, it started when I was young, but it was, wasn't was like an interest type thing. It was something I was kind of thrown into. So... Uh, my first experience was when I was six years old and it was kind of like a vision or um, I, I don't know, like a dream type vision thing, but it was something that was really relevant uh, according to my mother uh, whenever I went and told her about it. And I won't go into it because a lot of it's pretty personal stuff. Um, but from there, you know, I started having more experiences in my teenage years, and it just kind of uh, got to the point to where it was part of my life. And then whenever I was old enough to actually research and investigate um, some of the things that was going on in my life, I was hooked at that point. Gotcha. Was there anybody in your family that was into uh paranormal or metaphysical anything like that oh no see it was kind of the opposite like uh you know i grew up in a really religious household so i was basically told a lot of the things that was going on in my life was uh it was some sort of like oppression like there was something it was an attack from you know the devil satan that's what we were told we were told all of it was evil and it wasn't something that that should be happening. So it was kind of the opposite effect uh, with me. But, you know, as I got older and I was in my teenage years, I knew that that wasn't the cookie cutter answer. There there was more to it than that. It wasn't, um, it couldn't just be all evil, all of the stuff that I was experiencing, you know. Gotcha. So who who was the one that actually told you that it was possibly evil or was that just you thinking it or no it was actually and it's it was actually my mother but you know my mother i think her intentions were good uh, she's been a constant in my life has been a really um positive influence on me in that regard i just think it's because maybe a lack of understanding of 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 you know, the paranormal in general, I think it was just one of those things where uh, she was told that as she was growing up and it just kind of trickled down. And that's what she she, uh, you know, threw on to me, which um, she would always pray for me and, and try to 
you know, get me out of those situations as far as, because there was a lot of fear involved in that. I would experience a lot of stuff and I would have so much fear um, because I wasn't really understanding what was going on. And she would be there um, for me, but it was almost like she thought it was some sort of attack that I was under. Mm, okay. Wow. So how have your views changed now about the paranormal now that you're involved in it so much? Uh, I I don't believe all of it is evil. I don't believe that all of it is demonic. Um, I know that there are strange and unusual things that's going on in our lives. And I'm very slow now to classify what that is because we can speculate and theorize all day long. Right. But we really don't know what we're communicating with. We really don't know, you know, who or what it is. So, I mean, it's it's something that we have to be very careful of whenever we're researching this. You know, we, we like to put labels on things. We like to do all of that. But, you know, it's there's more to it. And again, like I said, there's a bunch of theories, but we really, truly don't know. So. All, all of it is speculation at this point. Right. Right. So um, curious. Now, when you're doing the shows and stuff like that, and we're going to talk about the different shows that you've been on and stuff, but is there one moment that you're filming and then all of a sudden you're like, what the hell is that? Where it just blows your mind and there is no way that you could – debunk such a thing uh yeah i mean there's so many so many experiences i've had like that but i i would say one that was that was pretty profound for me was uh when i was filming the holzer files and it was at the howard dickinson house um this was in henderson texas and i was of course in the basement because dave would always loves to throw me in the in the creepiest places ever um so i was in the basement it was it was um a pretty creepy area and after a while i started getting this really pronounced like intense headache um and i, I was starting to pick up emotions that were not my own i mean normally i'm a i'm, I'm a calmer guy but it was something where i was extremely angry i wanted to lash out uh, I knew it was it was not my emotions and I knew that it was something because it was so sudden I knew that it was nothing it was not a normal thing there was something really strange going on and I was picking up all of these emotions and as soon as I stepped out of the house a little bit later all of that subsided but that was one thing that was one experience that I had that I never want to have again because whenever I feel like I'm not in control of a situation or I'm, I'm not in control of myself, um, it's terrifying. And it's, it's not something I, I ever want to happen again. But that was one of those moments where I knew, OK, um, you put yourself in certain situations. You need to be extremely careful because you don't know exactly what you're dealing with. And it could have pretty uh, dire consequences. Right. Wow. All right. So Dave kind of pushes you to go into basements and stuff. Yeah. And, and well, p he gets a bad rap about that. And I'm joking around when I say it. Um, <laughs> he, I, he he would put me in those situations because especially on the Holzer files, it was one of those things where I would kind of put myself in the shoes of maybe who or whatever might be there. And I kind of put myself back in that time frame of, um, you know, especially if I'm in a location like the Queen Mary, whenever it was a bustling ship and and all of that, I kind of put myself back in that time frame. And a lot of times whenever I'm doing that, strange things happen, some really weird things happen. And Dave knew that. Dave knew that there was a lot of interaction that would be had whenever I'm put in those situations. So he it was basically one of those things where if it's not broke, don't, you know, don't try to fix it. Go and if we know we're going to get activity, if we put him in a really crappy place, let's go and do that every <laughs> single time so we can get 
that result every single time. Um, so, and in the process of doing that, he it actually taught me a lot. It taught me how to kind of face my fears when it comes to things like that. And whenever I don't truly understand certain things or what's going on, to try to endure them and, and to know that I'm going to be okay, then that I've got backup. So even though I hated him at the time, whenever he's doing all of that, I hated him so much. He he taught me a lot and, and really helped me grow um, in what I do. So, you know, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. And even though I didn't like it at the time. Gotcha. So, um, Dave, what do you think about what Shane just said? Just kidding. He's not with us. I just had to do that. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he's somewhere just typing away, commenting away. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, no. It's funny. <laughs> well, Valentina, you are like the goddess of the uh, the Queen Mary. Yeah, I know. Did you see my face light up? I know. I know. <laughs> I'm like, that's my second home. Uh, you, you know what's really cool? What's really cool about the Queen Mary and when we filmed at the uh, for the Holzer Files, we were the first team, you know, because of COVID and everything. Yeah. I think we were the first team ever to film there whenever there wasn't, there, there was nobody on board except for like a skeleton crew. Yeah. Uh, but there was nobody staying in the rooms. There was nobody there. Like we were the first uh even tv people back on the road I, I believe as far as on like discovery side we were the first team back on the road to film we were kind of like the guinea pigs to see if we'd <laughs> we'd be okay after everything that was going on um but we had unfettered access to the entire ship with nobody on board and i don't you know that was such Hi. a surreal experience and something that i think uh only enhanced our investigation when whenever we were there right i mean i know whenever i've stayed there I, i've always tried to pick when it's the slow season and i tell them put me in a room make sure you don't put anybody or book anyone near me i i you know because it's very right. easy yeah to tainted because i mean they have parties they have concerts you know and there's so much going on that it can really ruin your whole time there and taint all the evidence if, if there's so much traffic so that is a dream come true i wish i could have been there <laughs> yeah it was awesome the only bad thing about it is you know of course there's tv and all of that and it all looks all cut and dry but whenever i say i had to help um wire everything up and i had to do that behind the scenes so you're talking about it's like miles of walking and like all of this miles of cable that you have to hook up in certain rooms. And it, it that was the only nightmarish part of the entire thing was was trying to set all the cameras up and and all of that behind the scenes. Like double duty, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Whenever uh, they put me to work, too. I mean, they they made sure. Um, yep. <laughs> they made sure I was uh, had that equipment tech uh, title down. Yeah. Wow. Don't put that on your next title for the next job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to switch that up so I don't get caught up in that duty. Yeah. <laughs> I need massages and lattes. Put that in there as a clause. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need, I need a, I need a different <laughs> some riders. You know, like I will only walk a certain amount of steps per yeah. episode. Then you need to be wheeled, wheeled over. Yeah, there you go, wheeled. I <laughs> see. I like that. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's see where were we at? Uh, well, Queen Mary, of course. What's it? Okay. So now you've done Holzer Files. You've done um, different places and stuff like that. What's your number one place that you would like to go back to, and then? the place that you don't ever really want to return to? Hmm, the number one place. Man, there's so many places uh, that we went to. Um, you know, I would have to say the number one place for me that I'd, I'd love to go back to is the Queen Mary. 
I don't think people I don't think people realize whenever they whenever they see on uh, on TV it just the scope of how big the Queen Mary actually is. And whenever you're there in person versus what you're seeing on TV, it's a completely different thing, a completely different experience. And it's almost like you're stepping back in time whenever you walk on the ship. Truth. And it's it's one of those things that it is so nostalgic almost. It's almost like I've been there, like I've been there in another life or something. But it's it's there's something that happens to you whenever you walk on board that ship that's it's almost magical. So uh, that's one place that I would definitely love to go back. And even if I didn't investigate there, just to go back and, and to see the beauty of that ship. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, a place I would not want to go back to again, we've already talked about this, but I would say the Henderson house, uh, because I kind of, we kind of knew what was going on. Uh, the Howard Dickinson house, excuse me, Henderson, Texas. Oh, um, that's where I was feeling the emotions that were not my own. That mm. that's a play uh, again. Like if I even had an inkling that that would happen to me again, uh, that's just something I'd like to avoid. So since gotcha. it did happen to me uh, during that investigation, I'd like to avoid if at all possible. Now that's not saying that I would not go back there and investigate at any time because I feel like you know as part of being an investigator. Uh, feel like you just you know, it's part of the job you have to go and do what you got to do especially if you're trying to collect collect data and and all of that so i would go back but it's not a place i would prefer to go back to i just right. say that right well where is that place at anyway that's in henderson texas oh in texas okay yeah have you done any up in minnesota hello oh yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, I, I just avoid it in the winter months because y'all have ungodly temperatures um, when it's cold. I mean, it, when it's not oh. just cold, it is freezing. Yeah, um, I haven't heard um, yet. Yeah. So Minnesota, I mean, I love I love the state, but again, not in the winter time. And, and it's like we did an investigation. Uh, me and Dave have done it couple of events up there at uh the palmer house in sauk center minnesota and uh he did me dirty one time he the first event that we had <laughs> at the palmer house yeah it's surprising right but the first event that we had at the palmer house was um he was like uh, it, he called it the hell freezes over event because i told him i said um, hell would have to freeze over before I'd a- ever do a- an event up north in the winter time. So he called it that because he got me to go to to that event, and it was negative thirty degrees. Oh and yeah. This southern this southern boy. As soon as I walked out of that airport, I was like, I almost turned around and said, I'm just going to go fly back home uh, because my lungs immediately hurt. Oh. Um, I think everything inside my nose froze up. It was just a bad situation, and and but you know, the Palmer House is amazing. We did um, a few events up there already, and and yeah, I love Minnesota. <laughs> Except for your lungs freezing. Except See, we, for the cold, we find yeah. that refreshing. Ugh. You know, well, I'm it's from... like it's almost a hundred degrees in the south right now, so I almost prefer the cold <laughs> because it go. is blistering hot right now. Same here. <laughs> yeah, Florida is not. Much different. That's crazy. No. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so Dave's like that, huh? I guess I'm just amazed. I'm gonna have a lot to talk to him about. Oh, uh, Dave. <laughs> Dave, like Dave, it will be the first one to pick on me. He'll make sure that he, he, um, he's like a big brother to me, and here he's always uh, picking and trying to find ways to get at me. It's funny, but you know, it's all in good fun. It's out of love. <laughs> oh, yeah, go. for sure. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so. I have some questions. Sure. Okay. Yay. <laughs> so on, um, let's see. So on 28 Days Haunted, um, did were you allowed to have your phones and did you call and check in with the other teams at the other locations because you were in Denver? 
um, at the Baron Inn there, the Lumber Baron Inn. Right. Were you guys pretty much doing your own thing and self-contained, or did you check check in with the other team sometimes and say, oh, hey, you know, this happened, that happened? Yeah, so there's uh, there, there's a lot of, like, a, like a misconception with all of that because uh, people thought, yeah, we had phones, we had internet, we had all this stuff. No, they took all of that from us. Okay. We didn't we didn't have TV, we didn't have radio. We were basically completely secluded um in our in our areas and you know the other teams and what they were doing, we had no clue of what was going on during that time. We were basically immersed in the Lumber Baron Inn. We were immersed in our location. Another really interesting thing about it is we didn't even know where we were going. So right. we knew where we knew where we were flying into, which was Denver, right? Right. So I, w- I was thinking Netflix. You know, it's got to be the Stanley Hotel if we're right. going to if we're going to Denver. It's got to be the Stanley or something, because I thought, okay, it's Netflix money. Right. So I was thinking it'd be something like that. So whenever we pulled up, they even blindfolded us driving okay. to the location. We had no clue where we were at. And whenever I took my blindfold off, I was shocked because I had no clue what this place was that was in front of me. I, I again, was expecting like the Stanley or something. Yeah, it's and, uh, random. <laughs> yeah, it, and, and you know, I've investigated a lot of places. I know of a lot of places, but I've never heard of the Lumber Baron Inn before this time. So it was a complete shock. And we, again, like I said, we had no phones or anything. We couldn't uh, call our families. We couldn't reach out to any of anybody right. for the entire 28 days. It was such a uh, very difficult experience, but it was a rewarding experience at the same time. So what so, was the, oh, <laughs> go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I, I'm just very excited about this. Um, <laughs> so what was your typical day like? You know, like take take me through a a, a day of, of the 28 days. Do you guys cook? You know, obviously yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Eat, you know, you've made food there and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, very good question. And before I get into that question, I just want to let people know that, you know, we filmed just our team alone. We filmed 24 seven. Right. So we filmed total probably 600 and something hours, just our team. But there was three different teams. So total there was over 2000 hours of footage wow that was cut down to six episodes a three and a half hour series so there were so many things that i wish y'all would have seen that Ah. that that unfortunately was on the cutting room floor um but the typical day for us would be we'd get up and ray which was one of my teammates uh, a really good buddy of mine he would always cook which thank God, because I would actually probably starve if, if, (laughs) cause I'm not a great cook. Okay. Uh So, so he would always cook some really good food. Uh, so we'd eat, um, and, and then me and him, like Amy wouldn't wake up till a little later in the day, but, uh, he and I would walk outside the, the backyard and there was like a, uh, a swing out there and we would be like two old men just swinging on a swing for like hours at a time just talking and 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 all of that and then we wouldn't even start investigating getting stuff together till around 3 30 or 4 in the evening um and that would be our typical day and then after about a few days it got extremely boring because it was It was like Groundhog's Day. It was the same thing over and over and over again. And so I'd I'd wake up, I'd eat, I'd maybe read a couple of books or or work out some and then, you know, investigate. And we did that seven days a week. Wow. Uh, It was tough. It was really tough because we couldn't even leave the property. So we couldn't leave and go anywhere. It was we were stuck. It was like house arrest. Yeah. Yeah. And then I mean, uh, I take it the food was brought to you and you guys would just have to cook. Yeah. So that's another thing that you, that people didn't see. But what would happen is 
um, they would tell us every week to write a list. So we would write a list down of what we needed or what we wanted. We would tape it to the door. <laughs> wow. On the on the outside of the door, they would have somebody come pick it up in like the wee hours of of the morning. Yeah. Um, and then we and then uh, later on in that morning, we would open the door and there would be bags of our groceries just sitting on the front porch. Um, we didn't even have we didn't even have contact with the crew. Right. Like yeah. a lot of people a lot of people thought inside that there were cameramen. No. no. There were 12 cameras that were set up on these poles all throughout the location and they were robotic. So basically they had somebody from uh, external somewhere that was controlling the cameras robotically. I see. And and so there was no cameraman inside at all. So we had no communication with anybody. It was pretty, pretty surreal. It's like quarantine, camping, bonding kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough. And then, you know, uh, Ray, I've known him for a while. Amy, I, I didn't know before this. Um, so it's, uh, it's actually just living with somebody, too, for 28 days. Like, right. uh, they, they showed, like, uh, small interactions with, like, they thought that we had drama with with uh, Amy, which we really didn't. If they really showed everything, if right. they really showed everything, me and Ray argued all the time because we're we're like brothers, and man, we would be at each other's throats constantly, like a married couple. It was it was <laughs> unreal how many times we fought, um, just uh, argued over uh, over silly like things. Oh, just. Anything pertaining to investigating or just personal? No, no, no. So, no. so there was this one time. Okay, he hates when I say the tell the story, so I'm going to tell the story anyway. So, <laughs> um, so like I said, he cooked and stuff, right? Well, there was this one night where he was going to cook pork chops, right? And he was like, "Well, I've got to go ahead and cook these because it's been in the refrigerator for like three or four days." Well, he pulled them out, and there was like little brown spots on the pork chops and i'm one of these guys where i smell the milk before i actually pour it because you know i want to make sure it's not spoiled so i saw those spots and i was like i'm not eating that there is no way i'm eating that he was like it's it's completely fine man it's fine it's been there within like three days i said i'm not eating it i don't care what you say i, I appreciate you wanting to cook it but i'm not going to eat it so he's like, fine, I'm just, and then he cussed quite a bit, and he took the whole package of pork chops and threw it in the trash, and I said, well, you're such an idiot, you know, if you, if you said it was completely fine, why didn't you eat it? You just wasted all of the pork chops. It's, it was just stuff like that. We fought over stupid things like that, and I think it's because we had, it was like cabin fever. We were all, like, right. bottled up in together, and it was just like, it, it, any little thing that we did it was just it was heightened it was more of like everything was just getting on everybody's nerves you know right well yeah that happens when people get cooped up for too long inside <laughs> yeah especially if you, especially if you can't go you can't leave the property and you can't just kind of unwind a little bit i mean it just gets it, it gets to be a lot yeah and and that was part of the experiment that right. you know it's like not just the the paranormal nature of things but just how do people deal with being cooped up together for a long period of time how are their personalities going to clash at times right. you know so it's kind of like a full circle experiment but wow. oh, were you happy about it uh, were you happy about is there anything you, you wish know, to change you know it was um amazing to me like even because, like I told you, we had no clue of where we were at. The fact that I was having like really vivid dreams of things that actually happened years and years ago, um, and and they were like verbatim things that had happened. Uh, it's it's an experience that I still can't wrap my head around, and it was something that I'll never forget. And and you know the people I I, I was with it. We bonded. It was it was such a great experience. And even though I was away from family and stuff, it was something that, um, you know, again, like I said, I'll never forget. And 
I don't regret doing it at all. Awesome. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, so they don't tell you where you're going. They pretty much blindfold you. They take you there. They dump right. you off. They make sure you have food there. You got to cook it yourself. Yep. Um, you are you allowed to look out windows, or do they have them boarded yeah. up? Yeah, so we could look out the windows and stuff. We can actually we could go on the back porch, uh, the front porch, but we couldn't. There, it was like gated all the way around there, and uh, so we couldn't leave that gate. Like uh, we were basically we we would see people uh, walking because Denver, especially in that area, um, they were everybody has dogs, like. Mm everybody has dogs <laughs> so you would see you would see people walking down the street and they'd be looking over at the house and they'd be pointing and stuff and like i guess you know they know the history of the place or i don't know or they knew that we were filming but you would see them but we couldn't really interact with them we could just watch them we would people watch but that was about as far as we could go wow yeah that's just that would be like the biggest mind you know what oh uh, yeah it, there it, is. It, was tough. it was tough but within within seven days all three of us wanted to leave like because you know that was the longest i've ever been away from my family as far as not communicating with them or anything yeah so we were already mentally spent after seven days we were ready to go wow. yeah, because because you don't know what's going on in the world you're cut off from social media from everything which you know that was that was a blessing in disguise i i loved having that break but not having my phone to be able to check on friends yeah. and family and all that that was the toughest part wow i'll be darned so how, how many of those episodes have you done at different places what do you mean as far as yeah the 28 days uh there's the the uh the 28 days yeah i mean it was only how many in episodes one there, yeah oh, it was you, one location oh one location okay. for 28 days and right. then we had uh netflix it, so it was a six episode series so they split up um our team and the two other teams and they kind of showed kind of the progression of everything between the the, the three the three yeah the three teams gotcha wow that's just crazy now is there another place that you've done or are you i mean no so so no. as far as with the 28 days thing it's um we haven't received word of of any other uh any other season oh, so okay. right now yeah right now gotcha. we're just it's kind of like up in the air so um gotcha. it's either we'll whenever we hear something we'll make an announcement from there gotcha okay i thought maybe dave was holding it up because he's not on the show <laughs> <laughs> hey that could be it too uh, they could be doing a big revision and where it's only him at a location instead <laughs> gotcha we should lock dave up for a while <laughs> yeah hey yeah and i get to pick the place exactly give him the basement for sure no food no 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 no, no. basements he's fine in what i'll do is i'll throw him outside in, in the woods somewhere to look for bigfoot because he hates the outdoors oh that would be awesome really yeah, so oh. i would put him outdoors somewhere um where he's hearing like uh bears in the distance i'll make sure some grizzlies are close by too <laughs> you'll just stand there <laughs> making little sounds from the <laughs> recordings yeah <laughs> that's funny so um okay so holes are files which one did you like better you did the 28 days 28 days i just can't i can't get it in my head i mean that would be that is total torturous to be put in there and who's the people that you're in there with so it's ray causey and amy parks so uh, Ray Causey is actually, he's part of my team, uh, my local team, the searchers. Um, okay. And Amy and Amy, I, I had never worked with prior to this. So, um, they're really, really great investigators in their own right. Um, but yeah, that was the 28 days haunted. And then the Holzer files, I, I would say they, they each have a special place in my heart, but there, there was something about the Holzer files that um 
you know, it's something, something that is very close to me because we got to do something, um, as far as in the paranormal field, that was really, really unique. You know, it was something that, that you hadn't seen, uh, before. So we basically reopened the case files of famous parapsychologist Hans Holzer. And uh, it was a fresh take on a paranormal show. And that, I think that's something that that's why I hold it so dear to my heart is because it was something that we got to do, something we love to do, but it was from a completely different angle than what you're used to seeing. Right. And that that's something that um, is really important to me. I like to bring like fresh perspectives to a situation. And the 28 Days Haunted thing was the same thing as far as it's something you hadn't seen before in, in the paranormal TV genre. Um, right. But it's something about the Holzer Files and, and having a close like connection with Dave and with Cindy and with Alexandra and, and just the dynamic of the team that we had was was really special. Wow. I'll be darned. So there's a girl that came into the chat room. Um, she said she's sorry she's late. Showing some love for Shane. Trina Marie. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that, Trina. Very good. All right. So, okay. So Holzer Files. Um, mm -hmm. How did you like that? What was so well that you can tell it, it you weren't locked in there for so many days yeah uh but you did well, have to work with what's his name so yeah um. with old dave <laughs> um well it, it was special like i said because we got to reopen um case files from hans holzer which was a famous ghost hunter he was the original ghost hunter um and this was cases from the 50s 60s and beyond and actually digging through his actual case files, which a lot of people don't realize he he took meticulous notes and all of it. So um, he took very meticulous notes and was very thorough in his approach on on the cases. So for us to be able to actually go and dig deep into those cases to see if anything anything had changed or if things had stayed the same, or if uh, if things, you know, things were different. A lot of people didn't know this. Uh, there were some cases that we that we tried to do that we couldn't do because the locations that were there in the 50s and 60s were torn down or something was built on top of them. So um, just that whole dynamic of having going through and, and doing that research, which is something I love to do anyway, is the research portion and the history um doing all of that was just phenomenal and then getting to work with his daughter and hearing firsthand accounts from alexandra on how her father was or what he thought about the certain cases that he was on that we were revisiting um just just a really awesome time yeah i'm sure there were so many more cases that you know didn't come to light but i'm sure he had hundreds of them right Oh, thousands. thousands. So th th yeah, so this is the thing. Uh, this is why it's so unfortunate we won't have a third season because we could have done 10 plus seasons without revisiting a case. So like without repeating a case, let's just right. say that. So he had that many cases that we could have um, revisited and could have done. So it was just that's the unfortunate part is we were just getting started you know but that's the nature of tv you know sometimes you'll have a show yeah. and it'll go and then what for whatever reason that it you know it's just not meant to be at that time right true yeah. but it, it's great that you even got the opportunity to bring some of those cases to light that you know oh yeah oh yeah it's such a such a such a, such a right it's such a blessing and it's something you know, I'm I'm very thankful for right. that that I was able to even be a part of that. So it's a very humbling thing and very very appreciative of the opportunity for sure. Wow. Well, so Trina uh, just said, Holzer Files had a great dynamic between Shane, Dave, and Cindy. That's nice. Oh, well, thank you. Yep. Yeah, and Todd's saying, 
what was it like working with Han's daughter on the whole? Oh, it was it it was awesome. Again, like I said, she had firsthand knowledge of who her father was and how he uh, approached different things and how how he what he thought on certain things. And a lot of people don't know is Alexandra is a seasoned investigator in her own right. She's done a lot of stuff. She's a she's a uh, an author that's written books and she's done a lot of things on her own as well. Um, so just to be able to for her to be carrying on that legacy and to be able to witness that and be a part of that is something really cool. Well, I'll be darned. Uh, Todd's asking uh, why no more holes or files? Why was it canceled? Um, you know, we don't we don't get um, the exact reasons. I think I think it, you know there was a combination of things. There was a merger going on at the time, and it was a big thing. And I, I think budgets had to be rearranged a little bit to try to fit the change of of the merger. And to be honest with you, too, I think some of it had to do with our with our name you know um a lot of people now it's, uh, they hear of a holzer and they're not exactly sure what that is um a lot of people do know hans holzer but there's a lot that don't and you know you would have shows like uh ghost adventures or destination fear or kindred spirits um or ghost hunters and then you would have the Holzer file. So I don't think people really knew that it was a ghost show, that it was a paranormal show. True. And, and I, I think that was one of the things that could have hindered um, some viewership a little bit because people really, they would just see the title of the show and be like, oh, okay, I'm moving on, you know, because they, they right. didn't really know what the show was about. So if it was called the Holzer's Ghost Files, right? I, I think it, it, it might have made a little bit of a difference of, oh, OK, well, we know what this is. Let's check it out and and watch it. And, and we still have people to this day that are finding just now finding the show. And they're like, oh, my God, when's season three? And we have to break the news every time. Like, oh, unfortunately, <laughs> there's not going to be one. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for Dave constantly posting it. I was like, yeah, well, got to support my my buddy here so well yeah. we really appreciate that yeah he, it, it, that was one thing we were so passionate about it. it was like people think it's just it's just paranormal it's tv it's entertainment right, but no. what what we would do behind the scenes and the amount of work and and digging into the cases and actually um being a part of that it's something we were so passionate about and something that we really took seriously and wanted to wanted to do it justice the best way possible. And I, I hope we did that in, in the two seasons that we did have. I think you did because even when I did watch um, all seasons, probably like, I don't know, when it first came out, obviously, which was like probably last year. Um, right. right. But um, I mean, I, I've studied and watched them all. And this one definitely felt different. It really felt like it had substance. There was research. There was follow through. There was experimenting. You know, it was really interesting to watch it unfold. I think you guys did a great job on it. I'm not well, just saying you. that, you know, but it was engaging. It was like, oh, what are they going to do next week? What, what's the next file they're opening up? You know, it was really exciting. And well, um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it, and I want to I want to give a shout out out too to and i think they kind of fall to the wayside at times but our production company so our production company is, is painless um painless tv which they're the same production company as uh dead files a lot of people don't know that yeah, but know. they good. they gave it they gave us the freedom to be able to be ourselves to be able to do what we wanted to do i know that me and dave specifically we said okay we'll sign on to do the show but we want to have access to the audio and video before anybody else does, because we want to review our own evidence to make sure that we know that it's 100 percent legitimate. Everything's good to go. And they're like, no, this is what we want you all to do. You you got it. Whatever right. you need, you got it. They were so supportive. They were such an amazing production company. We had such a great crew that really if it if it wasn't for them and, and their hard work, holes or files wouldn't have been what it was either so right and it's shout out to them yeah absolutely 
Cool. What so, else? <laughs> so, um, all right. D now I'm going to put you on the spot here. You ready? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. all the shows out there, other than the ones that you've done, <laughs> which one is your favorite? But you know, again, uh, favorite show that's out there, okay. other than like, yours, which I'm sure like is your like a paranormal show. Yeah. Oh, uh, so you're. I've got friends on all of these shows. <laughs> um, okay, well, you know, you don't have to say. You know, just, yeah, so just... so I, I would tell you one because I know um, how they are on not um, kindred spirits is a, is a big one for me. Uh, Amy and Adam. Um, you know, their approach is is something that is. Just their dynamic together and how they work together. It's something that's pretty special. Um, and I know them personally and I know how they are on and off camera and they're consistent their personalities are consistent it's something that i really enjoy just watching their cases and what they have to offer um so yeah i would say kindred spirits yeah okay Th that's been gone for a while right they haven't no no they just had they a season come out had a that's season come out this yeah past okay. this past this year yeah okay i'm gonna have to check that out it's hard yeah. to tell because some stuff is like they take take it away and then they put it back up and it's yeah. hard to well, see, that's see what's the, yeah, new. That's, yeah, that's the thing with the mergers and everything, like the merger that was going on, like you don't really know what the status is of a lot of these shows, you know? So it's kind of, you know, it's it just whenever it pops up, you see it and you're like, oh, okay, here's a new season. And it's kind of it's kind of all over the place right now. And kind of network TV is kind of, that's where it's at right now. And so we're just trying to be patient and see what direction it's going to go, you know? Okay, Shane, here's the big question, okay? All right. <laughs> Sorry to do this to you, but what show out there, not because of somebody on there that, you know, you don't think is that good or anything like that, but what show out there can you say, I don't really care for it? Is there any show you could, a, a you could say that? Show? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, maybe I, I, just I'm say not... that off the air. No. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not going to go there. I, I won't go there. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Let's see now. We do have a question. Todd, out of curiosity, is anyone working on achieving um, all of the Hans files? Recordings, etc. I'm assuming they were uh, a lot of older recordings that really should be transferred before the original tapes degrade beyond salvage. Yeah, like digitize. Okay, well, um, I know that the production company had some, um, but really that decision and everything is completely up to Alexandra. Um, I, I know that she has taken great care with with her father's files. So I, I think she may be in the process of digitizing some of those, but that's completely her decision in that regard. Um, but I do know how how passionate she is to make sure she preserves those. So um, yeah, I know the production company had some, the ones with the, with the files that we were currently working on, I know that they were in charge of digitizing those and making sure that those were taken care of and transferred over. Um, but the the rest of the files, that's that's something that Alexandra, I think, is working on currently. Gotcha. And I think she's doing some things on uh, different projects and stuff right now where she's continuing on her father's work as well. Okay. We keep that alive and bring oh, that yeah, for sure. you know, to the light so we can all learn from it. For sure, yeah, it's something, it's, he he was uh, a pioneer 100 percent and people do need to learn from him because you know he didn't have google and the internet back then all of his research was was very again like i said meticulous it, it, it was something that he really put a lot of heart and soul into and and come to find out we we found out through digging through some of these cases he was right on a lot of things that he researched on. 
and this was out without the age of internet and all of the things that that we have now so the, nice the fact, yeah the fact that he he hit on some things without having um the resources we have is just amazing okay cool okay so i have an email and how the email works is that um troops sometimes will email our show and this is the first time in quite a while uh asking questions uh, now their question to you uh shane is uh oh they say hello valentina they know of you <laughs> um, but what they're wondering is what is your favorite type of an equi of equipment you know that's a very good question and there's so much out there um and my 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 answer is probably going to be uh, underwhelming, but uh, it's a good old fashioned digital recorder. Like that's one of my favorite pieces of equipment because there is so, there has been so many uh, EVPs that I've captured, so many different uh, strange voices or things that I couldn't explain that I have captured. And I think just the whole, uh, field of ITC, the communication and electronic voice phenomenon is such an untapped. We've only tapped the surface of of that phenomenon in and of itself. So I, I would say a good old fashioned digital recorder is one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is um, a thermal imaging camera. So like a FLIR or anything like that. And, and the reason for that is because you get to see in real time atmospheric changes so any temperature changes or anything you get to see that in real time you get to see your environment around you changing in real time and that's something that that is really cool to me because it can explain what's going on or it could give you a rational rational explanation of what's going on if there's a draft in a window and you you point the thermal camera near that window and you see the color changes there, you'll know right away that, OK, well, there's a draft there. That's where the, the cold spots coming from. And you can explain that away. And, you know, it wouldn't be Grandma Betty that's making <laughs> that's making the temperature change. It's just it's just a uh, a breeze or a draft from the window. Gotcha. OK, um, let's see here. OK, well, I just got to say that one piece of equipment I could not live without is my body cam. I oh, love yeah, absolutely. Body cam. That is wherever you go, it's there. It's awesome. Um, well, you don't miss anything either. And I think that's something no. that, that should be incorporated a little bit more like in um, in the TV side of things. So that way we can see right away, like the point of view of the investigator and what's going on. You know, I think that and I think uh, Investigators are already using it somewhat, but I think, if, you know, it'd be one of the staple things that people would use every time. I think that would be really cool, too. Yeah, we did a place uh, down in Faribault one time and Stephanie and the rest of my team, Sim and everything, uh, we were having a great time. So Steph's like, let me wear one of those body cams. It's like, OK, she's got long hair. It covered it. <laughs> we got oh. you know, people were saying things were happening. She's like, Oh my God, you should have seen this thing, Jerry, but I got it on the body cam and we're looking at it and it's like, your hair is in the way the whole entire time. Oh, and, oh no. darn. And one thing, uh, one of the girls actually forgot it was on and she went potty out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's not a good situation. You no, got to make sure not. that you cover your bases before that happens, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another uh, question from uh, one of the troops. Um, they give his name. Uh, the other one was a her, by the way. Uh, they give his name, but uh, they cannot tell us where they're at. Um, he's asking, do you have anything going on now that you're going to be announcing or is it something that you cannot talk about um there's a couple there's a couple of things that i can't talk about but there is one that i can so like i said before I, i've got a team called the searchers and uh we're actually filming some episodes and what we've been doing is putting them on youtube for free so people can enjoy them 
Um, and it's basically just bringing people along for the journey because the whole idea behind the searchers um, brand is we're all searching for something. We're all on a journey together. And it's basically bringing all of those who are watching along for the for the journey. We also have a podcast called the Paranormal Mind Podcast, and that's on all streaming platforms with that. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what we're doing right now. We got those projects in the works. We're we're going uh, to Indiana in July, and then Oregon in in August uh, to do some filming. And then uh, we're also offering a thing on Patreon which I'll do a shameless plug right now, patreon.com forward slash searchers believe. Um, we're trying to get to 100 patrons and we're only like seven away from that. Once we hit 100 patron members, um, we're going to do a drawing for an all expense paid trip to come investigate with me and the guys from searchers. Wow. Anywhere, anywhere within the, the continental United States. So, um, that's basically all expense paid. So your flight, your hotel, your food, everything would be paid for. All you have to worry about is getting there. Uh, we're going to do a drawing, do a drawing. Once we hit the hundred, you have to be signed up for the $25 a month tier member to qualify uh, because this trip's going to be expensive. So we want to make sure that it's designated to those, those tier members that for the time being. But that's patreon.com forward slash searchers believe. And that's what we got going on right now. I'll be darn. Well, okay. So the troops are saying, you know, Shane, keep it up. We love your work and everything. Valentina, you're awesome. Um. But where is there <laughs> anything about Jerry? Don't worry about it. Oh, but that, hey, that just goes without saying. You, you, yeah. you, know, mm -hmm. you know they love you. <laughs> anyway, so Todd's asking, what is Shane's favorite piece of evidence that you've captured? Oh, man, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I would say one of the one of the biggest one. Again, this was on Holzer Files um, and I can't. It, it was the second door landing. What is that place? I can't remember. Howard Lodge, maybe. It might have been Howard Lodge. Um, you got to. You got to go check out the episode of season two. Um, and it was the the spirit on the or the ghost on the second floor landing, I believe, is what the title is. Um, but it's when I was, of course, in a basement again and Dave and Cindy were up in the attic and we caught on one of our static cams outside of the, the entry entryway to that attic. It was it was like a wispy, like a like a mist figure going up the stairs towards them. And then they were, Dave was upstairs at the top of the entrance pointing the SLS camera down towards the entryway and caught the figure at the exact moment that it went up. Mm. Um, you, I, I'm not explaining it as well as it, uh, how awesome it really is. So you have to go check it out on the Holzer Files, the second season. But I think that was one of the most, uh, fascinating pieces of evidence we've ever captured. Awesome. That's great. Oh, we're here at the end. Uh, Shane, again, thank you so much. Um, everybody, you know, make sure you uh, link or get to uh, YouTube and look for the searchers and uh, subscribe and everything. Uh, all that stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you got to thank you. And V, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Para-X. Thank you, Sarge. Thank you. Thanks for the troops listening. Um, and you guys hold on for a second. And uh, thank you very much. Have a good evening, everybody.